Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. Bodybuilding is one of the hardest sports in the world, if not the hardest. And for those who disagree, just think about it. It's been over 50 years since the first Mr. Olympia, and there has only been 16 winners. Keep in mind, I'm talking about Mr. Olympia Men's Open, not all these weak-ass divisions that they opened up recently, right? So the Mr. Olympia Men's Open has only been 16 winners in over five decades and there are tens of thousands of bodybuilders in the world why is it that only a prestigious few were able to obtain that title and it's sad because bodybuilders don't get enough respect for the work that they're put in most people just say oh all you got to do is be on steroids think about how stupid you have to be and how ignorant you have to be of human physiology to think that all you have to do is take steroids and become mr olympia but yet most people out there are that dumb. Trust me, I see it in my comment section all the time. Also, think of how stupid you have to be to think that all you have to do is work hard and eventually you'll be Mr. Olympia winner. Hard work alone will never get you this title, just like steroids alone will not get you up there. It's a combination of hard work and most importantly, genetics. And in this video, in fact, it's going to be a five-part series. We're going to cover the genetics that you need to become an elite bodybuilder. This is part one. We're going to start with anatomy. Number one, muscle bellies, all right? So your muscle insertions, your tendon limbs, that is one of the biggest requirements to actually make it in a sport. Keep in mind, I'm talking about the elite level. Why? Simply because insertions decide both the shape of your muscle, right? Whether you're going to have a peak or not, and ultimately the size of your muscle. How big you can make a muscle grow is determined by your insertion. For instance, here you guys know the famous example. All know this notorious for having an amazing bicep peak, and that's mainly because he has an incredibly short bicep. You see here, I'm gonna use layman terms. You guys can see the gap between his bicep and his forearm. He has a very long tendon, as you can see, that causes the bicep to peak. So the downside of that is obviously, he's not gonna be able to have maximum size on his bicep compared to someone like Sergio Oliva. As you can see here, you see the difference? You see how small the gap is? You see how small that tendon is compared to here, right? The more space you have here, obviously, the bigger your bicep peak is gonna be, but you're not gonna be able to be a fucking mass monster when it comes to overall size, right? And like I said, it also goes both ways, right? Sergio was gifted in the fact that he has very short tendons, so massive, massive muscle belly, but that makes it very, very hard for him to achieve that peak here. So depending on which area you're in and what the judges favor, for example, if the judges favor bicep peaks, then he would have been fucked, right? Whereas if the judges favor just having a massive arm, then that would have went in his favor. And which is another example of how genetics play a crucial role because you cannot control the shape of your bicep, right? You are given your tendon limbs at birth and there's nothing you can do about it other than try to simply maximize what you already have, right? So this is an example where pure genetics would disqualify the person on the left or the person on the right, depending on what the judges are favoring during that era. Luckily for both of these guys doing the error, uh, it, it didn't play such a big role. In fact, if you're watching this video, take a look at your bicep, right? Do you have short muscle bellies or long muscle bellies? There goes another example here, Ronnie Coleman back in his early days. As you can see, Ronnie is notorious for having short muscle bellies, right? So you see this huge gap here, right? Which gives him an insane peak, just like high grain, right? But it stops his uh, bicep from really achieving its maximum potential in terms of overall size. And if you look on the right, one of my favorite bodybuilders of all time, Roly, look how massive his bicep is, right? And as you can see, the reason he's able to maximize his bicep development, I should say bicep size, is mainly because, look, the gap is almost non-existent, right? So he has very long muscle bellies and a very short tendon, right? And look at the difference, right? You would think Ronnie doesn't even lift when you compare the overall size of the bicep. And once again, all genetics. Another example is calves, right? Look at the difference between the picture on the left and the picture on the right. Both are bodybuilders. I'm pretty sure some of you guys can guess who these are, right? Obviously, you have Dorian years here, and I let you guys guess who this guy is. But both bodybuilders, both elite bodybuilders, both are on a crap ton of steroids, and obviously both work extremely hard. But yet, look at the difference that the body bit on the left simply can overcome due to genetics. Dennis Wolf simply has shit genetics for calves. And if you think about it, look, right? One of the biggest determinants of how big your calves can grow is your tendon length, like I mentioned earlier, right? And look how long his fucking tendon length is, right? Look at his insertions, right? He pretty much has black genetics for calves, right? That's what black people are notoriously 
known for. These are genetics that are amazing for jumping, for running, but terrible for maximizing size. Whereas if you look on the right, he's able to maximize his calf development because there's just so much more room, right? Look how short his tendon is compared to the picture on the left, right? If your muscles, if your calf starts all the way up there and goes all the way down here, obviously there's a lot more room for your muscle to grow as opposed to this picture here. Remember guys, you can only grow what you have. You cannot increase or decrease your tendon limbs. Another example of where insertions play a role is lat development. Once again, I'll let you guys guess who the guy on the left and the guy on the right is, and I'll just reveal later on. But as you can see here, look at that, right? Keep in mind, this is a professional bodybuilder. Hard work, plenty of roids, plenty of experience, but yet you can only work with what your genetics give you. Dennis James, there you go, was just fucked when it came to insertions, right? Look at this right here, right? You see how low, you see how high that is, right? Compared to here, right? And of course, you guys know Dorian Yates. Look how low his last go, right? So he's able to maximize what he was given at birth. And once again, this is 100% genetics. Where your lats insert, where the original and stuff, that is genetics. There's nothing you can do about that, right? Once again, you can maximize your lat growth, but you cannot increase or decrease the length of your muscle bellies or your tendons. Next, you obviously have waist, right? Whether your waist, whether you have a naturally wide waist or a narrow waist, that's once again genetics. You guys know who the guy on the left is. Brian, notorious for having an extremely, extremely narrow waist compared to the guy on the right right under eight percent body fat as you can see shredded to the bone but wide ass blacky waist now obviously there are some things you can do kind of like you know not training your obliques and things like that but trust me if you do not have a naturally narrow waist there's nothing you could do obviously you could try to make your lats wider and your shoulders wider to try to create the illusion but you're gonna have to work so much harder than everybody else to reach the same goal. Another example here, you have Lee Haney, the GOAT, and Branch Warren on the right. Once again, right? Lee Haney, 245 pounds. Branch Warren, also around the same weight. Obviously, Haney slightly taller, but look at the waist difference. Extremely, extremely narrow waist compared to this. And like I said, there are other factors that also affect your waist. Obviously, don't try, don't try to be a mass monster because your waist is gonna get out of hand. But on a genetic level, you can still see the structure that Lee Haney was gifted with. And the third thing that relates to anatomy is obviously your clavicle width, right? If you have wide ass clavicles like Jay Cutler ever since he was young, that gives you a massive advantage on the body when stage because it gives you that X factor, right? The V taper plus nowadays the X factor with the massive quads and all that stuff. So will help you dominate the front last spread, the back last spread, the front double bicep, back double bicep, front relax, right? A lot of poses you're gonna have an advantage in just because naturally you have wide ass shoulders, right? Whereas Phil Heath had to overcome that by making his shoulders as bulky as possible. So he had to overcompensate, even though he was a genetic freak, he had to overcompensate in all the other departments in order to be up to par. I mean, just look at the difference. <laughs> it's insane. It's like a bone door here. And I found this picture on Reddit where someone literally photoshopped Phil Heath with um, wider clavicles and look how much of a difference it makes same size same weight same everything right but just look how much of a difference it makes just having wider clavicles which once again you cannot control phil heath on the right here will probably would probably won 10 miss olympias instead of just seven and the reason it took him so long is because one obviously he joined the game late but he also had to overcome the fact that he was very narrow that was one of his biggest criticisms when he first stepped on the stage everyone kept saying hey he's too narrow he's too narrow Right, so it took him a long time to bring everything else up to par in order to keep up, right? But can you imagine if he had wider clavicles? Look at this. But anyway, guys, that's it. This is episode one. I'm going to make uh, four more episodes where we discuss the other genetic components you must have in order to be an elite bodybuilder. Today was anatomy. Next time, we're going to cover things with the genes related to muscle growth, fat loss, motivation, pain threshold, and pain tolerance, energy production, you name it. I'm going to cover every single category of genes that come together to create a Mr. Olympia physique. All right, guys, see you in the comments. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push-pull, home workouts, you name it. 
also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nicholas of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. Alright guys, I'm out of here.